All right, so now that we've got the mast up, it actually looks like we might be able to splash this week. The boat's keel is six feet and like two inches below the water line. That's pretty deep. And the haul out slip here doesn't typically have that kind of depth available. And well, it just so happens that tomorrow, that looks like the only day for the next week or even more where we're gonna have those conditions where the water level will hopefully get high enough for us to go back into the water. But I've got a couple projects that I have to finish before the boat can splash. It's gonna be a boat dog again. How do you feel? Cold, excited, nervous. What was that? We just hit something. I'm Desiree and this is my husband, Jordan. We're sailing around the world, or at least trying to. We made it as far as Panama on our first boat, Atticus 1, which was a really small fixer-upper. Now we're on our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, but she needs some work before she's ready to cross oceans. So we're working hard to finish up the last of our boat projects so we can sail south to the Caribbean. The first thing is I'm gonna be replacing our grounding plate. This is basically our boat's lightning protection. So it's a big bronze plate that connects through big cables to the standing rigging that holds the mast up so that all those wires coming down the boat connect to this and ground to the boat. Problem is that this ground plate has corroded really, really badly and needs to be replaced. So I've got a new nice shiny one here. I'm gonna pull this one out, prep the area, clean it, and then seal and install the new grounding plate. All right, so next I'm gonna be reinstalling our propeller. Now you may remember that when we first hauled the boat out that we discovered that our max prop from PYI had suffered a lot of corrosion. And so we sent that off to PYI and they rebuilt it and sent it back to us. And you can see the blades are in perfect condition. They're pretty much brand new blades. And then here's the housing and the hub. It's definitely got some surface pitting, but they polished it up pretty good. And they said that there's plenty of material here for this thing to continue to work. I realize now that we never really discussed why our prop had so much corrosion on it. And the reason is because the zinc that belongs on the back end of the prop had fallen off. It was completely gone when we hauled the boat out. When the boat was put into the water for our survey, I think that the zinc had already corroded a lot and needed to be replaced. But because we just were taking the boat for a survey, maybe they hadn't replaced the zinc thinking that there was a decent chance that we weren't gonna buy the boat or whatever, I don't know. And so because that zinc was already slightly compromised, I don't think it corroded away. I think it corroded to the point where it wouldn't hold on to the propeller anymore. All right, so there you go. The uh, max prop is on and working. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Okay, good. The next thing I've got to do is I've got to replace the zinc on the rudder shoe down here, the bracket on the bottom of the rudder. And finally, we had a little bit of bottom paint left over. So we decided to slap that on to areas like the rudder and the water line, areas that get a lot of growth and a lot of wear from water passing by. All right, today's a big day. We are finally splashing. Okay. So we've got a couple of things that we got to do on the boat. I just got to clean up this area and then we're going to go ahead and put Atticus in the slings and then we'll be a sailboat again in the water. Woohoo! We're going to be a boat dog again. Are you excited? How do you feel? Cold, excited, nervous, but once we're in the water, I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> like it's 
It's been forever since I've set up dock lines. I don't know what it is, but like mentally my brain has just shifted. It feels a little foreign. Okay, I'm gonna come forward a bit. got for us. Let's help a bimini. <laughs> yeah, it's nice feeling like we have a whole other bedroom back here. Our home's coming together. Man, she's a beaut. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> So glad to be with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for making our home so much more awesome. <laughs> Are you a wet dog? <laughs> All right, bud. What you doing out here in our new little fancy outdoor patio? Yeah, dude. So I'm just enjoying some of the new improvements that we've got on Atticus. Check this out. It's such a game changer. So I just connect our new Selvin tackle down to the dinghy. I pull on the bow, get it up, pull on the stern. Okay, and she's up. We're gonna avoid growth on the bottom of the dinghy. It's gonna help prevent theft. We can do this quickly and easily on a daily basis, you know, every morning, every evening. And just to clarify, we're not gonna use these davits when we're sailing offshore. We might, if it's like a day sail, in very, very calm conditions. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm like re-falling in love with Atticus too. When we first bought it, I knew it would be this awesome platform to build systems like this. On Atticus 1, we had our shade solution figured out, we had stowing the dinghy and outboard figured out, but all of those systems on Atticus 1 were not ideal. They were really labor intensive and took a lot of time. So it's just so crazy to be on this boat and have all these like really permanent, robust solutions. To me, Atticus 2 is not just this sailboat for fun. It's like this spaceship and we could take it out into like the middle of nowhere and survive. We have everything we need, but also do it comfortably. Excited to launch this spaceship, yeah, man. Let's let's do it. Let's go to Mars. <sighs> <laughs> So we're leaving the dock here and we're still kind of just driving through the mud to get out of here. So as we were backing out of the slip, we could really feel that the keel was dragging through the mud. We were barely making any progress backwards, but we were told that the mud was really, really soft here and that it wouldn't be an issue and that we could just slowly drag through it. But as we were crawling back, we felt the boat run into something that completely stopped our progress. We were then told by one of our neighbors that there was actually a sunken piling on the bottom of the river lying right across the entrance to our slip. And that when we entered this slip the day before, the tide was high enough so that our keel went right over it. But now that the tide is a little bit lower and that we're dragging through the mud, our keel is contacting that piling and it's not letting us out of the slip. Well, they say you shouldn't sail on a schedule. We've actually got a wedding to go to this weekend. We've got to be in Raleigh, North Carolina in like six hours. So when it became obvious that we weren't going to be able to get out of the slip on our own, a couple of guys from the marina came over with a work boat and we tied a line to a cleat on our stern and they tried to pull us up and over the pylon. But no matter how hard they pulled, it seemed like there was no way the keel was gonna slide over this piling. So we realized what we needed was to be able to lift the keel up and over the piling. So we handed a halyard to the guys in the work boat and they, using the work boat, pulled on that halyard to force the boat to heel over. The problem was this was really intense, really aggressive. So we decided instead to take the halyard across the fairway and tie it to a distant piling. That way we could crank down on the halyard using the winch and heel the boat over in a very controlled manner. Oh my god, I'm not cut out for this stuff. <laughs> Good job! Brains over bronze, dude. 
Once we finally got out of the slip, we were again dragging through the mud, but we were making consistent but slow progress until suddenly we felt an impact. What was that? We just hit something. And the boat completely stopped. The work boat tried to tow us past whatever was stopping our progress, but no matter how hard they pulled, yet again, we were stuck. Ugh, all right, it's not a really good place to be stuck. The wind is picking up, so the water level is dropping and it's gonna get even worse over the weekend. So if we can't get out of here in the next 30 minutes or so, things are looking pretty bleak. After chatting with some of our neighbors in the marina, we decided that it appeared that whatever we were running into was in the middle of the fairway, and that we should try to work our way to the extreme south end of this channel. Now, it was not at all easy to maneuver the boat when the keel was in the mud, but we were able to back up a little bit, turn hard to starboard, and slowly make our way over to the far south side of the channel. Our first attempt didn't quite work, but we backed up again, pushed even further to the right of the channel, and barely skirting along the boats on that side, we were able to get past whatever it was that was stopping us. Wow, that was, uh, that was stressful. That was challenging. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Ooh, well, I guess that's boating life for you. It's funny because I feel kind of a little bit like a weak person because I get so rattled so easily, but it's hard to express. Like when you're there in the moment, literally like pushing on a piling, it feels like if you mess up, you could just lose everything. And I just depend 100% on Jordan and he's so good at staying calm and just like doing what needs to be done. I'm so impressed that he's able to problem solve when like everything we've worked for so hard is just like hanging in the balance. At least that's what it feels like. <laughs> How you doing there, Skipper? Coming down slowly. Our autopilot is out right now. Same with all of our navigation stuff because we've disconnected a lot of like the GPS antenna and the wind instruments, so none of it's connected. So I'm just hand steering, sitting in my throne, using the boat hook and like my feet and just like trying to relax. Right now it's one o'clock. We need to leave, like be in the car driving in one hour. So we're gonna have to get over there, tie up and get going. We still got a pack too. <laughs> Okay, so we're on our way to the welcome dinner and we don't have time to stop and do our hair or anything. Woo! Seven minutes away. We are currently 10 minutes late, so we're gonna be hopefully only 17 minutes late. Anyway, welcome to Raleigh. Tommy! Flash! Okay, from boatyard to glam. You ready? Okay, let's go. Thank you. Wow, this is very different from boatyard life. <laughs> yeah. So this wedding is important to us for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're excited because my mother and siblings will all be there, which is pretty rare for us because we live all over the place. Also, the groom Josh was my brother's best friend growing up. Also, because Josh is a doctor, he's become our official medical advisor aboard Atticus as we explore the world. He's helped us out in so many pinches, like when Jordan busted his head open in Grand Cayman, and Josh had to walk me through how to stitch him up using Jordan's hair and super glue over the phone. Gotcha. Jordan's hair is long enough. I can't remember. Actually, he needs a haircut, so it's perfectly, perfect length. <laughs> What's really special about this wedding, though, is that Haley's family is from India, so we get to be part of a traditional Indian celebration, which is colorful, delicious, and full of dancing. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out this week's episode. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to some of our newest patrons. So to our Yacht Master level patrons, thank you so much. McCotter's Boatyard and Marina. Also a couple weeks ago, we mentioned that we got our Highfield dinghy and Tahatsu outboard through McCotter's Marina because they are the licensed dealer of this region. And they got a huge shipment of Tahatsu's and Highfield dinghies, but they are selling out quickly. So if you've got your eye on a Highfield dinghy or a Tahatsu outboard engine, definitely get in touch with them soon.
Moving on to our next Yacht Master level patron, thank you so much, Carlette Simpson, Larry Rizzo, and Richard Bond. And to our newest Deccan level patrons, thank you so much, Bruce Locksmith, Pamela Parker, and thank you again so much, Pam, for all of your help with Oso. He is becoming such a good little boy, and he misses you. James Schumacher, Patrice Haggerty from SV Sonamara, Sonamara, Sayonara, Linwood Walton, Jason Wisser, Rummin' Around, also known as Robert Hudgens. I'd like to rum around town right now. Sheila Burns, Jack Morehouse, and SV Lotus. So to our patrons, thank you so much for all of your love, support, and encouragement. It really means the world to us, and without your support, we couldn't make these videos. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend, and we'll see you next week.